Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to do another redrawing my old fan art video, but the fan art that I want to redraw is actually this one. Now, if you're seeing this one is blurred, it's actually because it's actually already finished, but I wanted to show you guys this because I don't like this piece at all. I know a lot of you guys liked it at the time when I drew it, but for me, I don't think it really looks like March 7th at all. March 7th is a character from Honkai Star Rail, if you're not familiar. And basically, because I don't really like this piece and it's been bothering me, it's either March 7th or Dan Hung that I've been drawing kind of like somewhat recently and they're kind of like the only characters I've drawn from Honkai Star Rail really and I don't really like how I draw them so in order to kind of move past it I wanted to do a redraw but the thing is I've drew this this year and it's only been let's say I think just under three months so let's go ahead and I'll switch over to voiceover and show you guys basically snippets of the process of me redrawing this illustration of March 7th and I'll talk about the changes I've made and choices and just like kind of the reasoning on why I don't really like this illustration in general not only because it doesn't look like March but there's like a lot of little things that I could nitpick at so yeah let's go ahead and do that so to start off with, I actually did a little bit of thumbnailing in my sketchbook because I was kind of thinking I was going to change up the pose for March or potentially kind of fiddle with the composition. So I am going to be changing the pose, but before we get to that, let's go ahead and make our new canvas. I'm also going to pop out the reference tool that's in Procreate so that I can have the old image of March on my screen as we work. Because I'm treating this as a draw this again or kind of draw on my like, redrawing my old fan art video I want things to be somewhat still similar unless I have the intention to go just like in a completely different direction but then I wouldn't really consider it kind of like as a redraw it just feels like a different illustration or fan art of the character instead so for brushes, I am starting off kind of with the same painting brush that I usually use for coloring. But the reason why I'm using this instead of the sketching brush right now is because it's a lot larger and it has a little bit less of that line weight variation. So I'm less tempted to do any kind of detailed work. I'm going to try to basically flesh out the body and the pose as much as I can. If I want to add any background elements, it's kind of like the time where I can kind of plan that out first just because I want to block things in quickly so I know that I'm not going to spend too much time sketching something and going to have to erase everything because I don't like the composition. So in terms for the pose, I was exploring whether or not I was going to change the direction of March or if I was going to play around with just like the weight of her body. So either raising up her shoulders and having her lean to one side rather than the other side. But instead I kind of opted for that. I would just have her both hands on the camera so that we have one arm kind of cutting through the pose instead of dropping her arm behind her back because it looked kind of awkward and it looks kind of... I don't know how to explain it. If you look at my old version, there's too much tension near the edges everywhere so like her shoulder doesn't quite touch the right hand side of the canvas the top of her head doesn't quite touch the top either some elements are just like slightly cut off and some things are like just too close to the border so i feel like visually there's too much tension everywhere so for the sketch i decided to shrink down march a little bit more so that her head is nowhere near the top and I can kind of fiddle around with the background there so it doesn't compete too much with March herself. So for March 7th, um, one thing I really didn't like about my drawing is that her eyes. So I don't think I did her eye color correctly, nor did I render it in a way that likes, kind of like makes any sense. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time sketching out her eyes and then we're going to go ahead and do the face. We'll move on to like hair and body as we kind of just go through and sketch. So this stage, I made a new layer over top of my rough sketch and I'm just gonna keep them separate just because I want to keep things on the cleaner side because I don't do line work I use my sketch as kind of like my line work so that I don't want to end up erasing too too much if I don't need to which kind of helps having that rough sketch already placed and done now you can see that when I'm sketching out the actual lines for her body it's a little bit easier for me to place certain let's say like body parts or her her limbs and stuff a little bit easier and if I don't want to draw them right away I can draw the clothes on top of where I think the body is and I don't have to really fiddle around trying to pretend where you know some body parts might be and I don't have to kind of you know get do a lot of guesswork 
So for the pose for the hand, I am going to change it slightly so it looks a little bit more like she's actually holding the camera because my previous pose, I feel like I haphazardly kind of drew it in in a way that doesn't really make sense. Now I'm going to say this right off the bat is that between the two illustrations, because I'm doing the voiceover after the fact that I've finished everything, there is a two hour difference and I feel like it might be due to the fact that my first illustration of March 7th was kind of like me rushing it in a sense because I don't think I took my time doing the sketch too much nor did I think about the colors in the background too much so I didn't spend as much time. I think the current one of March that I'm working on right now took about six hours and the one of like the very first attempt actually took about four hours so I think the two hour difference definitely kind of helped me deliberate on certain choices that I wanted to make whether or not it was color choices or just like you know the actual details of March herself like I needed to fix her hair because I realized my first attempt I never really understood how her hair was kind of formed I think I just automatically assumed kind of how to uh draw it but now that I've doodled her kind of a few times I know how to section off her hair in a way that makes kind of sense that resembles her a little bit closer than I did in my first attempt so I'm trying my best to not look too much at my first attempt when I'm working on this piece because I don't want to accidentally follow the same exact details or like the exact same mistakes that I made in my first one because that kind of defeats the purpose and I should have talked about this in the beginning too um in terms of improvement, so like I said, there's about a, I think, two to three month gap between my first attempt and my current attempt. And the reason why there might be kind of like what might seem like a drastic change for some people or a drastic quote unquote improvement between the two pieces, I feel like it's also just that you know some people might have days where you just draw a bad drawing and I feel like March the first attempt was actually falling more under that category I don't think I really learned anything that was new or I didn't incorporate anything like new techniques or things that I've learned to incorporate into the current one I think I just made better choices that now that I was kind of like conscious of the mistakes that I made in my first attempt which is kind of nice to kind of play around with sometimes if I don't like an attempt sometimes I will scrap it I think if you guys watched like the video earlier this week which is the start to finish video of me drawing Kaya's new skin and I did two attempts for that one as well but I didn't follow through entirely with the first attempt which is kind of like I don't know it's kind of a bit of a balancing thing so it's either you gauge whether or not you should push through a piece because just because you don't like it, you shouldn't abandon it right away. But sometimes like you just know when to abandon a piece because you don't want to spend all this time working on a piece you didn't like. And then in the end, you still don't like it and you feel like you wasted all that time. I feel like if I continued with the Kaya piece that I first did, I would kind of fell into that kind of place. So I was kind of lucky that I recognized that I wasn't going to like this piece probably even after I did like you know colored in Kaya finished the whole piece and that I restarted and did a new one and for March I think it might be because I did it for a video that I wanted to finish it and make it complete which is why I didn't really abandon it even though like looking at my sketch initially it wasn't too bad I still disliked the hair a lot but I thought you know, sometimes you have the thought like, oh, your sketch is like, okay, like it could, it could pass for, for the most part. But sometimes you can think like, oh, once I actually do the coloring, the rendering, it's going to fix it. And for the most part, for me, most likely it doesn't really fix it. I have to really like my sketch for the most part before moving on to the coloring and for the rendering because there's just some mistakes I feel like you kind of have to know your own habits that are you actually gonna finish it or fix it during the coloring and the rendering process and I did not follow through which kind of led more towards like you know some parts of March being a little bit more rendered some parts are not or some parts make sense and some parts don't so um you know it's a bit of a balancing thing and just like more knowing your own process and how you your brain thinks about certain ideas and things like that 
So we're pretty much almost done with the sketch of March right now. And I can tell you right away, I like this one a lot more than my, my first attempt. So yeah, I just like the pose. It's a little bit more, um, I don't know. It makes a little bit more sense than dropping her hand entire, or not her hand, her arm entirely back behind her back. It just, for me, it just makes a little bit more sense. There's not too much things having too much tension at the edge. Maybe you could argue that the arms being boxed in to the sides are a little bit too close to the edge. And that little part that's kind of slightly cut off could be a little bit of a bother, but let's just move on. So after the sketch, I duplicated my sketch and I set one to multiply and I hid the other one as kind of like my backup, which I usually keep one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer under my sketch layer and we can start coloring the background first. So another thing for the two pieces that I'm gonna make a little bit different is my color choices. So as much as I like the pink and blue for the most part for just like overall aesthetic is that I don't like how much everything is competing with each other. So March kind of has um, blue, pink, and kind of like a purple and white aesthetic, but the blues and pinks that I chose for her versus the background, they're all very similar. So you can see that her hair in my first attempt kind of blends in with the flowers in the background, which I did not really like, but I, for some reason, didn't change it. So immediately on the current one that you're seeing, I added more greens to the background. The blue is a little bit more saturated and dark. I kept the clouds in a similar area. I also didn't make the background entirely bright in a sense of a value because another thing I didn't like from my first attempt is that the contrast was oddly, I don't know, not balanced enough. I feel like some things looked quite blown out just because I added some addition layers and I didn't really knock back any shadows or anything to the point where form makes sense. It just seems like there's too much um, bright white light that doesn't really make sense that kind of makes it lose some of the details where I kind of want things to still have form. So for the background though, I added, like I said, green so that we could have a little bit more contrast of not just having things to be completely pink and blue. I've also changed the flowers to be much more, I guess like warmer in a sense or more towards like a reddish pink rather than just like a pastel pink, which is too similar to March 7th's hair. So. I kind of did that. I'm also knocking it back a little bit by adding a little bit of a overlay layer and then a, I think a screen layer or something. I just kind of fiddle around with the different blend modes for the layers so that I can kind of achieve a different color palette than my first attempt because that's something I just didn't really like is the fact that March kind of gets lost into the background rather than her standing out from the background but pretty much everything else composition wise, pretty similar. I also did not drag the flowers across her. So the background for the foliage and stuff is mostly on her right side. And then on the bottom left, I have more of like bushes or some kind of greenery rather than across like where her hair and her face is. I don't have like a rush of pink going across, which also contributes to kind of hiding March's hair too much in my first attempt. After that, we make a new layer after merging my background layers, and then we can go ahead and start coloring in March. So I'm starting off with the skin tone. And at this point, because I have already set my sketch to multiply, you can see that it's also changing alongside with whatever color I'm putting underneath. And this is just gonna help it help kind of soften the look of my lines and the colors together. And we'll kind of adjust that a little bit later anyways. So I kind of cut this out of the footage is that I was trying to do a different lighting for the face. I think there's like a really cute way of doing lighting where it's like you do a band of highlight above the nose and then you do kind of like shadows of the hair kind of cutting through it. I always like what that looks like, but I think I just don't do the appropriate lighting for that situation. And I don't think I'd make it in the right steps for me to execute it correctly. And if I remember correctly, I think I was trying to do that with the first attempt as well, but I didn't knock back the shadows in her face. So for some reason, the upper half where her bangs kind of reach her eyes, it's kind of like a dark brownish purpley gray color, which I it doesn't really make sense because it's not really present too much in the rest of her face. So it kind of seems um, a little bit too dull in my opinion. 
So instead, for my current one, I decided to, you know, separate so that we have shadows directly from the hair on the face. And I'm also trying to incorporate some of that blue into the shadows so it doesn't look too, too dull. And then after that, we can go ahead and work on the hair. So I think I skipped over the eyes a little bit because I was still a little bit iffy on how I wanted to render her eyes just because I do follow kind of like a little, at least like a little procedure in my brain of how I render eyes and color eyes. And I usually make the top of the eyes a lot darker than the bottom. But for people who have two different eye colors within their their iris, I guess. So like March has pink on the top and blue on the bottom. I risk running through a problem of having the top too dark and not representing the correct color. So obviously the remedy is to just mostly follow how the original artist did the artwork for March or like the character actually looks like and just make the pupil dark enough and I'll leave the eyes pretty light and bright. So I think that reads a lot better because my first attempt, I just really hate the color combination that I use. I know that one has a lot more just cool tones overall compared to this one, which reads just a bit more warmer. But I don't know, maybe it's just a preference thing too. Because I know a lot of people like the colors of the one that I did first. It's just, I don't know, maybe it's just execution and also just like whether or not the character looks like the character kind of is a, a little bit of an issue here. So even though it's only been like, let's say three months between these two illustrations, I definitely think there's an improvement. But like I mentioned, the improvement's like not quite due to me learning new things. It's more like one, a little bit better decision making, two, being a little bit more careful about certain things and keeping being a little bit more mindful, I guess. But then the other thing is just like, you know, like I said, I think my first attempt was from like a bad art day, art week, or like art moment at that time because I don't know. I think at the time of making it, I'm not sure if I said it in the video, but I just didn't really like it even when I finished the drawing. So I think I mentioned I also wanted to redraw like her at some point and that's what I'm doing right now. But I do think I want to redraw Don Hung, but maybe not really as a redraw video. I think I'm just going to do a different illustration of him entirely, probably instead because I feel like I'm in a weird cycle of like I don't like how I draw March and I don't like how I draw Don Hung therefore I won't draw anyone else quite yet just because they are two of my favorite characters I love their dynamic with the, the main character I also like them just as characters on their own I think they're quite fun um, just like seeing their interactions and their choices and stuff I think it's quite neat so yeah, I don't know. I want to draw Welt soon, if anything, and potentially Asta. Asta is like one of my favorite characters too. I use her a lot in my team comps anyways, but I like her as a character quite a bit. So hopefully in the future, I will draw a few more Honkai, in, I was going to say Impact, Honkai Star Rail characters, um, either traditionally or digitally. Because I think some of them have some fun color palettes too that could be fun to do for like watercolor pieces and stuff because I haven't painted in what feels like months with watercolor. I've only painted with gouache like here and there and then for watercolor, I've kind of just, you know, used it to pay place down like a base. But back to the illustration. So uh, I've locked my sketch layer and I'm going ahead and coloring in the sketch to match a little bit closer to certain parts. So I made, you know, things around the face a little bit warmer, things around the clothing, which tends to be a little bit cooler because there's a lot of whites and blues. So I made it a little bit more on the cool side. After that, I merged my sketch down to my colors. I made a new layer and we're gonna add in some extra lighting and or shadows. So right now I'm adding in highlights and I'm trying to be a little bit less like haphazardly placing my highlights. Sometimes I feel like I use more of like an airbrushing technique and I go over certain areas in like big chunks. But this one, because I don't want to over, I don't know, what is it called? Overexpose, I guess, maybe her hair too much for it to just read as white. So I just wanted to do it lightly and then kind of section off little bands of highlights rather than making things look just completely white. Because one thing I noticed about also March 7th's hair is that her hair is quite 
a light pink at the top and then as we move closer to the bottom it gets to be a little bit more of a darker saturated pink and I think light pink or just light colored hair in general tends to be harder for me to add like a proper band of highlights which means that I kind of need to focus a little bit more on the shadows but for her hair I kept it kind of minimal for the most part because I also added very subtle shading with a little bit of blue and purple into her hair um, underneath like kind of like behind her head and near her neck there's like a whole chunk of hair that is kind of seen between her head and her shoulders and I decided to use a screen layer to make it lighter some people do this as well to kind of create a sense of depth it's kind of like atmospheric I don't know if it's atmospheric perspective but basically in a lot of like I think it's mostly in maybe like baroque painting or rococo painting where it's like they have like a lot of foliage and it's really pretty and pristine and kind of like airy feeling a lot of things like as they move farther away from you tend to get a lot lighter and brighter and they feel like they're like kind of like almost sinking into the background so that i wanted to treat her hair in a similar fashion so instead of making it dark with a multiply layer i decided to make it a lot lighter by using a screen layer so moving on i kind of skipped over this part but i merged all my kind of blend mode layers onto the kind of merged sketch and color layer so that we're, everything's on one layer so that I can easily clean things up and kind of uh, render to my heart's content basically. So this just makes it a lot easier because I don't have to fiddle around with uh, messing around with the layers, like looking for what layer is certain things on so that I can just erase and paint um, as needed. It's kind of like the main reason why I don't keep things on separate layers is just because when I want to erase chunks especially like around the hair or the, like around the body or like any of the edges I want to be able to like erase but then paint at the same time very quickly so I don't want to keep switching between layers just for me to get rid of like certain things that may be like stray lines that are coming off the edges and stuff but that's also another reason why I want to keep my background layer and my character or foreground element separate because if I truly did everything on one layer it would have been a mess because um imagine kind of erasing around the hair but then you're erasing by painting in the background it would be just a, a really big pain basically <laughs> so for the most part it's just kind of sharpening up layers I'm fixing a little bit of colors or like shapes for certain chunks or shadows just to make things read a little bit more easily by making them a little bit more clear or a little bit more sharp so that's kind of just the general gist of how I do the rendering or what I'm doing in this step because majority of like the shading and just blocking in of color is done during like the rough coloring or what I consider the rough coloring stage. But after that, I basically, yeah, I just clean everything up and then at the very end, we can add like some effects and lightings and then that kind of helps tie everything together and then that will be the illustration. But for the most part, uh, the rest of the footage will be just me rendering certain parts and kind of bringing it up to a certain finish until I deem it pretty much done. I don't think the rendering took too long actually, just because I spent a lot longer, I think, coloring and sketching. So kind of what extended the amount of time probably was the second sketching phase, which is like my cleaner sketch and then adding in the background because I spent a little bit more time doing the foliage to be a different color from March herself. And it's kind of more like a cooler, darker toned background compared to my other attempt. And I think it just reads a little bit better. Her hair doesn't get as lost into the background. I also think that, I don't know, the pose is a little bit better. It's a little bit more flowy with her hair and the lighting doesn't look too overblown hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely like this one a lot better. I think also her eyes aren't this weirdly large or too up her skull or her, like on her face. I feel like my first attempt, her eyes were too large and I didn't give her enough scalp area. So it felt like the eyes took a even more significant amount of space on her face. So you know, just more things to nitpick about. And like I said, uh, I don't think there's as much tension around the canvas other than maybe the the left side where I kind of have part of the fabric and cut off. But I feel like it's like still enough that it doesn't feel too, too bad. And the fact that I have a little bit of the foliage getting cut off as well kind of helps ties that in a little bit. 
Another thing that I think is kind of just better overall for this piece is the fact that I feel like I understand her hair and her clothing a lot more than before. I did have to go into the game and take, um, I think, a couple of references just to see one, her glove. Her glove basically covers, I think, the first three fingers and then her pinky and her thumb are kind of exposed because she's an archer, so she has that for her... I'm assuming the hand that she's using to grip the whatever you pull back on a bow. <laughs> and then, yeah, I didn't remember that, you know, like there's, she has like a lot of fabric on her arms. So she has like a, a piece of fabric kind, kind of drapes under her shoulder or not under her shoulder, after her shoulder onto her kind of like upper arm. And then there's another piece of fabric that kind of opens up and kind of splits near her elbow-ish area. And then after that, her cuffs also have another layer of fabric that kind of hangs. And I feel like I always get that confused. I think it makes sense on the left hand or like the left side of the canvas. But the one that's holding the camera near her face doesn't really make too much sense. You know, that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this one as a win for me just because I definitely prefer this version compared to my old version. You guys can let me know if you would like me to potentially redraw um uh, Dan Hung or if you like me just to draw a new one for Dan Hung that or I'll just like move on draw other people draw well to draw Asta draw somebody else at this point Sampo maybe but yeah after that I basically started to add in a bit of like petals and stuff to kind of push into the foreground so it's kind of similar to my first attempt also i just like adding kind of petals or sparkles or dust particles in the front because i think it always looks very pretty and very cute so added those in and then after that i believe i start to sort my layers so that we can duplicate um basically all my layers and then once we duplicate it i'll put them in folders or no i put them all in a folder then i duplicate it and then i will flatten my new duplicated layer and then after I flatten it, I'll go into Gaussian Blur to kind of create more of a blurrier image of the new flattened layer and then after that, I go ahead and take my eraser tool and we can kind of erase the Gaussian Blurred version to make things back into focus. So it kind of just softens up the edges of the entire illustration and the character, but I can also play around with what I want to be in focus and not in focus without having to draw things on the foreground and the background. Last but not least, I'm adding a overlay layer. I'm adding some kind of more intense colors and kind of like adding a little bit warmer colors to march and then some cooler colors to the background and then after that i will knock it back so that it's not too jarring and then that's basically it for the illustration i believe so yeah let's knock this back so it's not too jarring and you can immediately see the difference between my first version and my second version i think the understanding of her hair makes a big difference and just color choices as well i definitely like the one on the right a lot more i just think I just think it looks more like her, if anything. So yeah, definitely took my time to draw her. I think she looks a little bit cuter too. This one looks a little bit like, I don't know where she's looking. So yeah, also the background differences, you can see the background is a little bit more cooler, a little bit darker so that March doesn't get lost into the background. And then yeah, it just makes her hair stand out as well and the rest of her clothing. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I'll leave you guys with the time lapse. I'll put both versions at the very end for you guys to compare and see. But I think that's it from me, and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!